You may be seated. God is good, isn't he, church? He is good. And I hope no matter what went on in your life this week that you realize that and understand the goodness and the greatness of God. And I pray that you'll be continued um, as we go out this week. And um, even as we get to hear the word, I have a friend here today who is going to preach, and I am excited about it. I'm excited about the opportunity to sit and to hear the preaching of God's word and to be refreshed by the teaching of God's word. So Wes, come on up. Um, Wes and his wife Lexi is here, and their three kids are off in the children's club, and uh, I'm sure he'll... Praise God that they all went out there. Uh, Wes uh, moved out to the city here two and a half years ago. Um, part of the Send Network that we were also part of here locally in Pittsburgh. And um, planted the church about a year ago. He's in Carnegie in that area. So they are just the beginning stages and, uh, of that. But one thing that I have appreciated about Wes over so getting to know him over the last two years is, is his heart for the lost and for evangelism. Um, there's not too many pastors that I would say have the gift of evangelism, and, and that heart um, just bleeds through. And, and so I, I love being around Wes because he encourages me in that and challenges me in that more when I hear the stories uh, of what he's doing and how God is using them and, and just the hard work that he puts in and <laughs> just talking with people. And um, he has been an encouragement, and, and he might not even realize it, but just being around him has been a blessing to my heart. And so I asked him to come and to preach, and so we'll jump in out of Psalms because I said, will you just give a challenge on evangelism and, and, and encourage us in that as God has called us in the mission that God has called us to do. And, and so, so grateful for you, bro, and, and excited to have you here. So, oh, great. Yeah. how about a round of applause? Just a welcome to Wes and grateful you're here, bro. Oh, I love these Canfields. Uh, they're a special bunch. And uh, he's told me to stay out of Psalms, but as we were worshiping Psalm 16 chapter 11 comes to mind. Anybody know it? You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It sounds like you guys know about that. Uh, we've been teaching our church how to worship slowly, but first we have to teach them who Jesus is. So we're, we're kind of in that phase right now, and that's exactly what I want to talk to you about today. But as we were worshiping, I thought, man, maybe I should change uh, this sermon title. Is it too late to do that? Because... Uh, in worship, wow, that's some joy. And uh, you guys really encouraged me this morning, seriously. Uh, so thank you. But what about more? Uh, what about more joy than when we worship? See, there's, there's probably no better joy, truly, than when you're um, just enjoying God for who he is. But there's another level of joy that I think many people in many churches today, perhaps yourself, might not be pursuing because you might not be aware of the root of where it comes from. We definitely get joy. We go to God. We just enjoy Him. In fact, it's our grand purpose in life to spend time with Him and enjoy Him. It's what we're going to do for all eternity. But there's another level of joy for us today, and it's called the joy in front of you. So how many of you, by a show of hands, would like a little bit more joy if I could promise you that today? If I could promise you, like 100% sure, like I'm telling you. I know I would, too. So what pictures make you think of joy? I've got a few I'd like to show you this morning. How about uh, carefree frolicking in a field, if this clicker works, there it is. A field full of dandelions or something like that. That looks like quite a bit of fun. What about a uh, <laughs> sloppy dripping ice cream cone on an August afternoon, coming up next month for sure? What about the boom of fireworks under a July 4th night sky? Maybe the gentle kiss of a newfound love. Maybe this one's not PG enough. They skipped it, I think. Oh, there it is. Okay. That's good enough. Uh, how about the tender hug of a young child? That's pretty sweet. That's a lot of joy. What about basking in the sunshine on your face by the salty ocean breeze? Some of you have been there this year, huh? I love when I came to Pittsburgh. I find out where I'm from in North Carolina. Everybody wants to go back there. So a couple more weeks, a couple more weeks, uh, we'll be on our way. But see, this is actually the joy that happened this time last year. I can't tell you how grateful I am for the Canfields and the Phillips because they came to visit me when this girl was being born. Eden Joy. Eden Joy Weinbarger, my third. I, I want to share a little bit about my family, but wow, that was a crazy day. She was born on uh, Sunday last year um, at this exact time, minus one week. 
And uh, what an amazing and, and crazy process that is. Those of you who have been through uh, the birth of a child, it is wild. And if you do it while church planting, it is not recommended. Um, not recommended at all, especially when you're setting up and tearing down in a hotel and have your buddy coming to preach and you hope he can figure how anything works because you have no volunteers yet, no leaders yet, no anything yet. Oh, no church yet. You're just kind of sort of there on Sunday. And your daughter's being born. And your wife can't help because she's clearly busy. Uh, so that, that was me last year. And uh, Eden Joy is amazing. Um, so my name is Wes Weinbarger. I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina. I've been married to Lexi uh, right here for the past 10 years, uh, plus a couple months now. We have Silas, who's uh, six years old now. It's crazy. Last time I was with you guys, he was like three and a half. Uh, there's a picture of our fam. And then Ella is now three and a half years old. And then Eden is 11 months old. Uh, well, she's we're minus a week, so that would be a one-year-old. Um, yeah, that's, that's how that works. Uh, so that's a little bit about my fam. I moved here November 30th, 2020 to start Traveler's Church. Uh, we did that because we say everybody's on a journey, and would you consider what next step you could take with Jesus today? You're created for a unique and a beautiful purpose. There's nobody just like you, and God has an incredible and purposeful plan for your life. I believe that about every one of you today as well. And I hope that I can be of some service pointing to one element of your life that will produce the greatest results of joy you can imagine. And it might be in an unconventional place. But you already have notes in your uh, bulletin today, so you've got a bit of a cheat sheet for where we're heading. By the way, um, if you're ever having trouble birthing a baby, eat some Thai food. Uh, it's what I discovered in Pittsburgh. Uh, that baby will come out much faster. Um, very fun. Love my wife. She's amazing. Um, the first child, he has a large head, and that was a challenging time. But the, the second child almost came out in the elevator. The third one, we stalled out, and Pittsburgh has some great Thai food. And so it's just a personal recommendation from me to you. And I want to say this morning, there's no joy like the joy of new life. You know that moment when baby comes out, you say, oh my God, like you know it was happening for at least nine months, and here's Eden Joy, and it's like there's no words that can express the joy of that moment. And I think God actually teaches us in physical birth the joy of spiritual birth as well. He teaches us in physical birth what actually happens in your heart. And the problem is I think we forget. We have a, maybe a happiness that occurs with salvation. And I want you to think about the day you were saved for a minute, because that's the passage we're going to read first. The day you were saved, the joy that happened in that moment. Maybe you were younger. Maybe it was recent. Maybe you were saved out of some crazy circumstances. But I can tell you, I know for a fact that you were happy. Because nobody gets saved and isn't happy. Nobody's reborn without happiness. But joy is lasting. Joy is able to endure and persist and to continue even when circumstances go the wrong way for a long time. Joy is deep-seated. Joy is there to stay in every season. And so I want to walk us through three passages. If you turn with me first to Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And I'll turn there with you as well. It's the first passage today. As you're turning there, I want to ask, are you fulfilled? Man, that was a beautiful thing, singing in worship today. It sounds like you guys have some vitality in your spiritual life. But 1 Thessalonians will show us a different angle of where joy comes from. I never want to skip past this because this is the joy of meeting Jesus. This is how 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 goes. We're going to begin in verse Four and continue to verse 7. You ready? Okay. For we know, brothers loved by God, that He has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. The first thing I'd like for you to remember from this scripture this morning is that the beginning of joy comes from beginning a journey with Jesus. 
Before we can move on to anything else, the beginning of joy comes from beginning a journey with Jesus. I know that's so simple, like, it's hardly worth saying, but the problem is, if I go on and talk about how we share Jesus with others, we're going to totally miss the point. We'll totally miss the point. If we don't remember that the beginning of joy is just from knowing Jesus. Like, that's joy. That's joy. And if your joy is lacking today, I would encourage you to go back to the source of where your joy started. Back to your first love. Back to what gave you that newfound joy in the very beginning. Your birth. Your rebirth and the God who made it possible. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand, pleasures forevermore. The question is, have you been spending time in his presence? Have you been spending time with the God who brings you everlasting joy? That's where it all starts. I wanna ask you, uh, what's one thing you don't like to do? Oh, and by the way, at my church, right, our church is like a year old. Uh, we started um, Jeremiah asked me today, so when did you launch? I said, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> last April, I had like two people, and you know, they were both related, and, and to me, and that was my <laughs> church. I mean, I'm going to populate this thing one way or the other. That's where Eden came in, right? But that's my best metric so far, and we heard the Lord last April. He said, start my church, and I'll build my church. We said, whoa, no one gave us permission to do that yet. Start my church and I'll build my... I was in all those meetings, Jeremiah, and they told me, Wes, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, here's all your checklists, and I, and I hadn't done any of it. You know, we were a complete failure, uh, it seemed like, at least on paper. <laughs> it sort of felt that way some days, too. But we obeyed. Start my church and I'll build my church. So last time I saw you guys, I had... It was the first six months. Um, I visited a new church every week for six months just to see where is their good gospel-centered, outward-faced work happening. Jesus is proclaimed here. The word is preached here. People sort of love each other, but they're also looking outward to impact people that aren't here yet. It was hard to find. And I visited our sister churches and gained a lot of, uh, a lot of inspiration and camaraderie through families like this. But he said, start my church and I'll build my church. So we said yes. And so in June of 2022, we started meeting in the Doubletree Hotel with a few people. I think our lowest attendance Sunday ever, I don't think, I know it was when we were gone and you guys doubled our size. <laughs> That's how small we were, you know. But we had been planting seeds, planting seeds. I can't wait to tell you a couple stories. They're coming in a few minutes. We had been planting seeds for a year and a half, seeds of the gospel, seeds of good news, seeds of good deeds, seeds of good people that maybe you can trust. Maybe people that will care about you and serve you when you have a need. And so we came on to last June, and that was it. It was time to start meeting. And man, that, the culture back then, it was crazy. We did everything. Um, and I just remember having to lean on Jesus and say, like, if I don't find joy in my relationship with him, I'm never going to find it in his church. Like, if this church never, never does anything, like, I have to have, I have to be satisfied enough with loving Jesus. And if I'm not, there's really no point in starting Traveler's Church. And there's really no part of being a part of Reclamation Church unless you realize you were reclaimed first. So, What's one thing, at my, at my little church, I'm trying to grow people in talking back to me. And I don't mean the bad way, I mean the good kind that every preacher loves. What's one thing you don't like to do, but you know you need to, because it gives you, you know, it helps you or whatever, it, it's something good for you. You don't like to do it, but you do it anyways. Let's hear it out around the room. Like, tell me something you don't like to do, but you do it anyways. What is that? Exercising, Exercising what else? Clean the bathroom, what else? Oh, taking out that garbage. One more. Somebody wants to be heard today. Who is it? The laundry. Thank you, Lexi. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you like doing laundry, right? No, 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 no. She does not. Uh, I think she does. She's so sweet to us. Um, those things bring you results, right? Whether it's garbage, bathrooms, laundry, exercise, whatever it is you need to do, they bring you results. I told you you could find more joy. And here's my promise. If you'll remember your first love, your joy will never go away. 
The beginning of joy comes from beginning a journey with Jesus. I want to remind you today that you have been chosen. You have been chosen by God. It says, brothers, you're loved by God. Like, God loves you with all of his heart. In fact, there's no part of him that doesn't love you today. You know, God is spoken of as rich in Scripture. What do you think of when you think of rich? What do you think of? Money, right? No, he's rich in mercy. God loves to love you. He loves to forgive you. He loves to be patient with you. He loves you when you stink. He loves you when you don't listen. He loves you when you're running. I was singing that song. Your goodness is running after. It's running after. And I thought, man, I've been running away sometimes. I love the Psalms. It says his goodness is running after us. That is that everywhere we go, it's like a tail, you know, and it does wag the dog eventually. You know, his love, like his chasing after, his goodness is running after us because he can't help but give his goodness to us. That's the reason we have joy first. The reason we don't grow in our joy is not an equipping problem. It's a calling problem. We don't realize how we've been called to grow in our joy. We don't realize... The results of delayed obedience equals a lack of joy. And so I want to show you next why that's the case. In this passage, a couple things I see, if you want to say, well, how do I actually live this out? Because if we don't apply this, it, it, it doesn't, it's not going to help us. We don't want information, we want application. And here's what it says. It says, imitate until you exemplify. Take a look at verse 6. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. I love that it's a both and thing. For you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit so that you became an example. If you'll imitate people who love Jesus and you'll imitate Jesus himself, you will embody his joy and end up becoming an example of what everybody out there is actually looking for. If you'll pour into your walk with God so that joy overflows out of your cup, it's going to affect everybody around you. And your joy is going to grow. Take a look at this next passage. It's Luke chapter 10. We're going to begin in verses 1 and 2. I don't usually jump around like this, but I want to draw a line between joy and sharing Jesus with others. So we're going to begin in verse 1, read verse 2, and we're going to jump all the way to the end of this little section to verse 17. That's on the screen there for you, Luke chapter 10. It says, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, you guys have heard this before, right? The harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Let's pray together. Jesus, we, I can't sit here and talk about evangelism. It doesn't do much good. Uh, But we can talk to you about it. And so you've told us to do but one thing when we look out into our world today. We can complain about political factions or personal problems or financial disasters or hunger or starvation. But the greatest thing that you would call us to do related to our world today would actually be to pray. So God, we ask you, send us out into your harvest. Send this church out into your harvest. Give them a boldness, a courage, Lord, that's rooted not in uh, I have to do this, not in I've been told to do this, not because I want to be obedient, but because I can't help it, because you love me so much that I've been so impacted by walking with you that I can't help but share you with everyone I know and meet today. Would you help them share Jesus with passion? Help them be persuasive, God. Help them understand what's going on in people's lives and present him in a way that truly seems like he'd make a difference because he will. Oh God, give them a love for people, a compassion, an empathy that they might ask good, insightful questions to learn about people's lives, to find windows of grace where you're meant to, to peek in and change their life. God, would they experience the joy of rebirth because of this congregation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
We're to pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. And if you've ever done that before, you know the answer to his prayer. Who does he send out? <laughs> you. Tell your neighbor, say, it's you. Go ahead, tell them. If they didn't hear it from me, tell them. It's you. I can promise you, start praying for that. Lord, send out workers. He said, okay, Wes, go to Pittsburgh. What? Where is Pittsburgh? <laughs> really? Yes, it's you. Take a look at what happens when they return. Verse 17. The 72 returned with what? Joy. Joy. Now, if you'll listen to the answer to your prayers, you're going to return with joy. I promised you joy, didn't I? This is not just in God's word once upon a time. This happened in real life as an example of what will happen in yours today. They return with joy saying, now look, they were a little bit confused. Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice in new birth. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Wow, what a, what a refocus. I've seen a lot of cool things. I've seen a lot of a lot of God's power. I ask for more of it. You know, I want to see radical conversions, incredible supernatural miracles. And I was trying to talk to my neighbor two weeks ago. He's a really bright kid. He's, he's 14 or 15 years old now, I think. And we were talking. He's, he was atheist when I met him, and now he's agnostic. That's progress, isn't it? Okay. And he said, if I pray... If I, if I get down on the ground and roll, and I'm not itchy after that, is that like a miracle? I was like, I don't, it might be. I mean, I, what do you, how do I even answer that question? You know, if I pray and lightning splits this tree, you know, and I said, brother, will that really convince you of God? Like, couldn't lightning have hit the tree or you've not been itchy? You know, you can explain away anything. I said, the greatest proof of transformation is a transformed life. Maybe a reclaimed life. Is that right? That's the greatest miracle. And that's the greatest proof of why anyone would want to see what you have. And Jesus says, that's what brings you joy. So first we find joy in our purpose, and now we find it in the process. First we find joy in beginning a journey with Jesus. But we see now the continuance of joy comes from following Jesus into mission to extend his joy to others. The continuance of joy comes from following Jesus into mission to extend his joy to others. So we get joy, we understand where the root is now, right? You guys already knew that. It might be true. It might be true. I, have, I, I just, I have a hunch. Trying to, I was asking the Spirit, like, is this from you? Uh, just now, because I'm not sure. But as I look out at you, and I was powerfully affected by the way that you sing. Um, my church is still learning how to sing. Like, they didn't know any songs or how to sing. They didn't grow up in church, you know. They didn't, they didn't sing. It's a foreign concept. And that was my previous career. Uh, we were talking before the service. That's, I did that for 15 years. And then, and then this jumped. And so it was really encouraging being with I have this hunch, it, it might be from the Lord, and just throw it out if it's not. Maybe you're looking for joy in worship more than in sharing worship with others. And I applaud you for looking for it in worship, because I don't think there's any better place to go. However, there's another level. And your pastor asked me to come here and talk to you about that, and I want you to know one thing about me. I am not a natural evangelist. Whatever he says is fine. It's because I'm so discontent with how bad I am at it that I talk about it all the time. It's because I'm so frustrated when I don't see people turn to Jesus. 
that I pray is like, God, make me more effective in this area. It's because I realize my lack. And so you're in good company if you think you stink at evangelism today. You're in good company if you're not really sure what to do or if you're afraid to do it even though you know what to do. You're in good company. I can relate to you today. In fact, if, I, if you think I'm lying right now, ask me to take a spiritual gifts test. I'll send you the results and you'll see evangelism's on the bottom half of any of my scores. And so it's funny that these guys think I, I'm good at it or something. No, it's because I'm discontent because I know what Jesus has called me to do. And I want to do it. I want to see it because I've experienced the joy of Jesus. And once you understand what he's done in your life, and then you hear his call when he says pray, and you do, and he fills you up with joy, and then he sends you out, and then one person comes to Christ. And you say, I've never felt a joy like this. I've never been so happy in my whole life. I've never been so happy because someone else found what I found. And I was a part of it. I'm not anything. I don't matter. But God let me be a part. That's joy. That's the process where we find it. That's the continuance of joy. So if you have some joy, good job. If you want to grow in it, start talking about that joy. Start talking about it. Start sharing it because that's where your joy is going to grow. So I can tell you, go share Jesus because you should. Go share Jesus because Jeremiah said to. Go share Jesus because Wes said to. Go share Jesus because you'll get some stars on your chart. No, go share Jesus because you won't be happier doing anything than that. I promise. See, when you walk in God's purposes for your life, you will receive the joy He has promised. But you can't just know His purposes. You have to walk them out, right? Every day. It's hard, man. I lead door-to-door -door evangelism all the time. You say, that's super old school. Well, let me just remind you, anybody know who Edward Jones is? The largest investing firm. You know how they get their clients? Take a guess. Door-to-door, -door, okay? It still works. But hey, maybe you like to go to the parks and talk to people. We do that all the time. In fact, Lexi and I make a habit of going to the same parks on the same days at the same time. And yesterday at the pool, I was doing ministry at the pool. Uh, you know, I shouldn't even put quote marks. We were doing ministry at the pool because we're trying to live like missionaries, not just like a pastor. I was a missionary first. I want to stay that way. And we're at the pool, and this guy comes up to me. Our church does these uh, blessing events all the time. Uh, just to, we say we're becoming good news for the opportunity to share the best news, right? So always trying to bless people, everything for free, bounce houses, cotton candy, snow cones, you know, we're, our hands are, are blue and red by the end of these days, you know, from all that snow cone stuff, and it's a lot of fun. And we had a family come up, and, and here's, the, here's the crazy thing. We've done like seven of these events this year already, movie nights, Easter extravaganza, 2,000 eggs, I mean, it's crazy serving people. And this family comes up at the pool yesterday who had previously met Lexi at the park, which is why I bring it up. And they came up and said, you're the you're tra Traveler's Church. We we're like, yeah. And uh, I didn't remember him at first. Lexi did. We talked later. And he said, uh, just yesterday, he said, we came to your event. And I was like, really? And he said, yeah, last year. And I was like, what? <laughs> last year? We've been having events all year. And he remembers us. And he said, I liked the vibe. I liked the vibe. We need to come to your church. And I was sitting here thinking, what took you a year? You know, to, like, we have seeds everywhere. It brought me so much joy yesterday to hear this man and his wife and his, his three kids sitting there say, we need to take a step towards Jesus because the seed was planted over a year ago. And I'm sitting here thinking, brother, you'd be... I was, I was knowing I was going to preach today. I was thinking, your joy would be so much bigger by now. You wouldn't be saying, I need to take a step. You'd be saying, thank you so much for that event last year. And now I'm one year old in Jesus. But right now, he says, I need to take a step. And for that, I had a lot of joy. And I was really proud. And I thought, man, sometimes it seems like we're making no difference. And it's a year later. And sometimes you move from atheist to agnostic. And sometimes a schoolroom of teachers where we just renovated a lounge, I went and uh, was talking to this guy who was selling a house, and he said, my wife knows you. She teaches at the school you just renovated and did a Chick-fil-A breakfast. Now, nobody met Jesus yet. 
Maybe they already know him. I don't know. But they know that we're trying to love them like Jesus has loved us. And so church, when you step out and attempt, attempt to share Jesus, you're going to find some new joy. You're going to grow in joy. That's where joy comes from. But I want to ask you, what is, before I get to this last point, what's the greatest reason to share Jesus? It's sort of like a recap. It's not a, it's not a, a, a trick question. What's the greatest reason to share Jesus? There's a lot of good reasons. What is the greatest reason to share Jesus with others? Because of who he is to you. Nothing else. I'm going to take you back to that route every time. Because if you, if you walk out of here and you say, I think I have some new inspiration to go talk about Jesus with others. I failed. But if you walk out of here and you say, Jesus means so much to me that I cannot but help to talk about him with everyone I know and meet today. Jesus means so much to me. He's done so much in my heart and in my family, and he's not done yet. There's more joy in front of me than there is behind. There's more joy in front of me than just the beginning. And so let's take a final look at a passage that I think really puts a capstone on this idea of the joy in front of us. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Now, I've heard this passage preached many times. It's so epic, isn't it? Those of you who have heard this before, if not, today's a good day to introduced to this passage. I've heard this before. There's this chapter before it that is it's called the Hall of Faith in an old version. I don't remember if it was NIV or whatever I used to use. called the Hall of Faith. Mine just says by faith here in the English Standard Version. And it gives all these people that have done all this crazy stuff, like these spiritual giants, that it, it, Jesus first and foremost, of course. But it, it lists all these people. And remember in the first passage today, it says, you imitated me, and the Lord, so you became an example. And so now, I want to remind you, going all the way back to that, the greatest reason to share Jesus is because of what he's done in your life. The greatest proof of Jesus is a transformed life. And so likewise, in this passage, the word, what's the first word there? Therefore. Now, look around you for a minute. Turn around, look around the room. Go ahead and be weird. Just if you're online joining us, I totally forgot to greet you guys, but I'm really glad you're here. Why don't you just turn to somebody nearby to you right now and say, say, what's up? You know, what's up? There's some pretty good inspiration in this room. I can feel it. I know it. I know it or you wouldn't sing like that. There's some good stories in this room. There's some amazing people in this room. There's nobody just like you. And in fact, if you want someone else to be the other end of your prayer, when he said pray earnestly, the world's missing out. Because you're a better answer to some of those prayers. Because no one has a story like yours. No one's just like you. Jesus made you specifically to connect with very specific people on the other end of your prayers. But first you have to agree with him and say, yes, yes, I have prayed. And therefore, I'll share. I found some joy. And therefore, I'm going to share it. This is how the passage goes. Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of God. Amen. What a beautiful scripture, isn't it? Wow. Usually when I hear this preached, and even when I think about it, therefore we're surrounded by such a great cloud, I start looking sideways. I'm like, where is this cloud, you know? Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, here's the cloud. I mean, that's very encouraging to me. And then I think about defeating sin, like I'm going to battle sin, I've got to become like Jesus because I'm not there, not even close. And so I'm going to lay aside every weight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of all this because I want to arrive at where Jesus wants me to go. 
But when we look at the perspective of Jesus here, there's a nuance that profoundly affected me as I was preparing to, to share with you this week. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy, the joy in front of him, for the joy in front of you today, Jesus has something to say. For the joy in front of him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, what does that mean? Sounds really good. You know, great literary passage here is beautiful. I want to share with you that the culmination of everlasting joy comes from conviction to endure, endure with Jesus in sacrificial love. That's too long to remember, so you better write it down. The culmination of everlasting joy comes from conviction to en endure with Jesus in sacrificial love. I really believe this is true. So we're going to start a journey with Jesus. We're going to begin with some joy. Do you remember the parable of the seeds, the parable of the sower? You remember the one group says they started out and they received it with joy. And what happened? There were other things that competed for that joy. And it got choked out. Remember that? Got burnt up. There's all kinds of reasons to quit after you get a little bit in the beginning. There's no root. And if there's no root, eventually, there's nowhere for the joy to grow. So if you've met Jesus, if you've accepted Him, if you've received Him into your life, as your Savior and your Lord, then you're ready to listen to Him, not to me. If He's your Lord, you're ready to listen. And what He wants you to know is that to continue in joy, we've got to keep walking out, sharing Him with others. But to finish, to finish, we have to have a conviction to endure with Jesus in sacrificial love, agape love, a different kind of love, a love that's going to cost you something, a love that's going to make you busy, a love that's going to Take some of your time, talent, and treasures. A love that's going to cost you sometimes even friendships. A love that's going to take over your life. It's not because I'm some kind of professional pastor. I want it to take over your life. You're the ministers. I'm an equipper. You have ministry to do, church. And that's where your joy is. So, I want to share a couple stories. I'm not preaching for 40 minutes, because I want to sit down and hear some of your stories and uh, relax and hang out with you guys a little bit, but I do have some really cool stories. It was two years of labor. It was two years of labor, um, and I remember last fall, I was in tears in this particular, Mon I believe it was Monday morning. And uh, I looked at Lexi, and I just said, we've been working so hard. We've been working so hard, and I just want to see some fruit. I don't know if you've ever been there. Like, working really hard at work, and you can't get a promotion. You're working really hard to fix a relationship, and it's just not fixing. And then your walk with the Lord, it can be the same way. So I've been working so hard, I just want to see some fruit. And I got a phone call within 10 minutes of somebody we'd been loving on and praying for and sharing Jesus with for a year and a half. And she goes on and tells me this amazing story about how she's starting to come to our church. And it was just this past January we led her uh, to receive Jesus as Savior after thinking she had him her whole life in her previous uh, faith family. And I want to read to you her daughter's story, which is uh, paired along with hers. Her daughter posted this on Instagram, August 17th, 2022. You want to hear about some joy? Anybody want to hear a story about joy? Yeah. I hope you do, because all this is nice in theory, but when you meet real people that found real joy because you were a part of it, then that's when you really understand what I'm talking about. Anybody ever experienced that before? I want that for you. Listen to this. I had to cry first. Okay, I had to get busted up first because it took a while. And it was hard. I had to endure first. But this is what happened. I believe I was saved tonight. 
It feels so good to me like I'm being wrapped in a constant hug. All my worries lifted because you can depend on God. I was praying tonight and I asked for God to forgive my sins and enter my heart and he heard and answered. All you have to do to go to heaven is sincerely confess your sins and just accept the gift of salvation that was given to us when Jesus died of the cross for our sins. Then if you ask God to enter your heart and life, he will always answer because he loves you unconditionally. You don't need a denomination. All you need is Jesus. Please share this so we can see more people in heaven when we get there. This girl is 16 and I wasn't even there. She was by herself in her bedroom late at night troubled after watching TikToks. Okay, TikTok. And she, this is what happened, but it took a year and a half of Lexi discipling her, of us inviting them over for dinner, of journeying with them, of tears, because I said, I want to see some fruit. And at the very moment, God answered our prayers and said, here's the fruit, buddy. It's been here all along. You just got to endure. And so church, the culmination of joy is going to come when you realize this truth, that like Jesus, it says we have to endure suffering also. We're not just going to go out and go knocking on doors like Edward Jones. No, 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 no. No, that's just the beginning. We've got to walk in relationship with people through the ups and the downs, through the belief and the unbelief. We have to walk with them when it's easy and when they spit it back in our face. We have to endure, and Jesus modeled that for us. We have to have a conviction to love people sacrificially. I hope you love people like that. If your love's weak, I can relate. Sometimes I get fed up with it and want to quit. Curl back in a ball where no one can reject the message, you know, except me. But if you've met Jesus, you know you have to share him. I know you know that. So if you find your joy a little lacking today... I'll take you back to these three things. First, go spend some time with Jesus. I don't mean in church. Go take a walk. Go to lunch with a couple brothers in here. They have a great story. I know it. They just say, hey, my joy's lacking. Can you pray for me? Spend some time with Jesus. Secondly, obey his command. Go share him. I encourage people a lot of times, say, do you know, do you know what has to be present if you are to have courage in sharing Jesus? Fear. If you're not afraid, you're not courageous. And so if you feel like you clam up and your lips won't open and you look weird or sound weird and do it all wrong and all that, like you're in good company, you just need to pray for some courage and go do it anyways. That's where your joy went. It's still in front of you. But then as you do that, you have to understand it's going to take a while sometimes. Sometimes there's a lot of pain before you get to the joy in front of you. And that's what I see in Jesus' journey as well. What was the joy in front of him, church? What was the joy? I, I thought at first, and I read the commentators and all that, you know, usually I, I just like, Lord, what do you mean, you know? And I was praying about it, but then I thought, maybe I'm wrong. So I started reading all the guys that study a little bit more than I do, because I'm out there trying to talk about Jesus, you know? And they said the same thing. What was the joy in front of Jesus? You. You were the joy in front of him. He wants to populate heaven. Yes, I know he has joy sitting at the right hand of the Father, back, but he's in a sea of redeemed people. It's in a sea of people. He went to the cross, yes, to obey the Father, but to redeem you, to bring you joy, to, to, to bring you back to life. There's no greater joy than the joy of new life. And the joy set before Jesus, the reason he would endure the cross for you, is because he knew it had to happen to bring you to himself for all of eternity. And so, church, you can endure anything. You can do anything for this little blip of life. You can get spit in the face of. You can get ridiculed. You can lose friends. You can lose time, talent, and treasures. You can be discouraged. You can cry a little bit. You can be mad, sad, whatever you need to be you can endure anything because the culmination of your joy will come in front of you when you do this and agree if you walk out your faith by not ceasing to talk about Jesus with people 
not ceasing, not ever stopping, not holding back. You will find a joy like you've never found before. Now, you already have the root, but maybe some of you don't. So the way I want to conclude today is giving you an opportunity to respond. I want to invite the band to come up. I want to give you an opportunity to respond to Jesus. Because here's the thing. In a group this large, in an online listenership, in this way, I can't, I can't know you all. What I do know is that if you've been hoping for some fresh purpose, if you've recognized something might be missing, I know it's only in one of two places. You never started the journey or there's another step waiting in front of you. But either way, I want to give you a chance to take that step today. You know, it's when I get... Uh, I talk about Jesus a lot. Just want to take a step back and get quiet. Sometimes we're overwhelmed, you know. And I think like, I don't know if that made any difference at all. In those moments, you can get really discouraged. Some of you have been sharing Jesus with your family members for a very long time. Am I right? And the Holy Spirit reminds me it's enough that Jesus loves me. It's enough that I was faithful. In due time, He will make you fruitful. And you will find the joy at the other end of your prayers, the joy in front of you. Let's pray together. Father, I want to pray for specific people in this room and online right now. They might have thought, like people always tell me, I've always believed in God. So that might be true, but you haven't always known Him. No. No, there's a moment in time. There's a moment in time where Jesus is so real and so good that we say, yes, I'll trade everything for him. You say, if we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord. And in so doing, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. We will be saved. Yes, indeed, everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus will be saved. Oh, we thank you that that is true. We thank you that you are not a differentiator of persons. No, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. And so right now, God, we pray for those who are not sure where they stand with you, not sure if they've begun the journey, not sure if that's why the joy is missing today. We pray that they would see their sinfulness for what it is, a separation from you. We pray right now, God, that you would forgive us of our sins. We pray that you would come into our life, yes, as Savior, but also to rule our lives as our Lord. We pray that you would come in and bring a joy like we've never known before. God, that you would elevate us to be an attractive people, not because we have everything externally, but because we've lost everything and have you. Oh God, we pray that our joy would be so exuberant and enthusiastic that everyone we know and meet would say, what in the world? Where do these people come from? How can I get that? Jesus, come into our heart, maybe for the first time. Jesus, come in and bring your joy and make a home with us. We need you. And we pray, Lord, that if someone prayed this for the first time, they would also have the courage to say, that's me. I began a journey with Jesus today. It was today, July 23rd, 2023, that Jesus came into my heart and started a beginning of new joy. But for the rest of us, Lord,
Would you push us to the edge of mission? Would you take us everywhere that you want to go? Everywhere that you want to go. That we might share Jesus with everyone we know and meet today. But we pray that we would want it. That we'll sacrifice for it. That we would sell our lives to find fulfillment in owning the responsibility of the Great Commission that you entrusted to us. Oh, you trust us because you love us. How you empower us because you're inside of us. And how you send us out from Reclamation Church today with a clear purpose, with joy right in front of us. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I knew you were going to step on my toes, and I didn't really want the... I appreciate Wes, and um, I, I know his challenge was not just for them, it was for me, and I appreciate you bringing the word, and I told you it's why I like to hang out with guys like this, and except I, I don't like it that you say that you don't have the gift of evangelism, because see, that's my excuse of why I'm not as good as you, so... And so now that just threw that all out because, <laughs> but I, I, I'm only telling the stories that were successful today. <laughs> I, I appreciate you. I, guys, listen, let, let's found it in the gospel. Our joy is in Christ. And I'm so grateful he started there. And, and it's because of that, that we go out and we live it. And we have those people, neighbors, those people coming to my mind. Yeah, some that I've prayed for continued, and I need to continue. And people that we need to continue to be faithful. And if you don't have that joy, then yes, find it in the gospel, find it in truth. And as Wes prayed, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe today as he prayed, that was the first time that you gave your life to Christ, please come and talk to me. Come and talk to Wes. Let us begin that journey with you and show you how you can have this relationship with Christ and what is. None of us are perfect. We're broken people who are pursuing him, and we want to do this together passionately and asking God to do something here in Monroeville, asking God to do something in Carnegie, asking God to do something in the city. That's why we join arms with other pastors that are gospel-centered and saying, let's do this together. It's his kingdom. It's his church. It's for his mission. And so let's go out and live for his glory. And we do that together, don't we, church? Amen? Amen. So I, I want to encourage you, as you go out this week, let's do that. Also, as you go out this week, um, our youth in two weeks are going downtown Pittsburgh to share some of that joy. And, and, and so they're going on their mission trip that they do. And um, so they are selling some cookies. And some of these bunt cakes were given to them. So anything that, so, and these are delicious. Um, and so you can get one of these, and you say, how much are they? They're a lot. <laughs> but it's whatever the Spirit leads you to give. And all the money goes just towards their mission trip because they're going to go down to Pittsburgh, um, downtown with Urban Impact, and uh, spend a week down there sharing the joy of Jesus and helping and serving. And so please stop by. If you say, I don't need sugar, get it and give it to someone this week and share some joy with them. I mean, that'd be a positive thing, right? You want to go love some people? Get five of these and just pass them out to people this week, and they will love you. I promise you. Um, also, we, there are tons of cookies out there. We made tons as a family. My wife did and my kids. So please take some, buy some of those things. That's all donations. And all that money just goes towards um, their mission trip that's going on as they get to go spread that joy. So thank you, bro. Appreciate you greatly. And thanks for um, coming and sharing. So let's stand. Love you guys. I appreciate you. And I want you to leave knowing that you are loved. God bless.